My friends, welcome to my latest starter kit. This time, it is tackling a genre that is very, very near and dear to my heart, which is death metal. I have been a fan of death metal for a solid 30 years now. Actually, since about 1991, I think, I discovered this comp uh, on Earache Records called Grind Crusher, which you look at the lineup on this and you will see uh, how ridiculous it was and how fortunate I was to uh, discover this thing. Morbid Angel, Repulsion, Carcass, Godflesh, Napalm Death, Terrorizer, Bolt Thrower, Intense Degree, Filthy Christians, Napalm Death, and Electro Hippies. And then there's like an extended version of it that has even more songs, which is the one that I had. Ever since then, I have been in love with death metal. And you might be wondering, why don't you talk about death metal more often if you love it so much? And the answer is very simple. It's the fans. And also, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, wants to explore their creativity, and learn new skills. If you have a specific skill you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. They have classes on everything from watercolor painting to hand lettering, to starting an online store, all kinds of stuff that anyone who wants to be a creative professional should know. As you guys probably know, I am a huge believer in the power of education to change your life because it did that for me, especially when it comes to these kind of practical skills. So I checked out Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD because if I want to level up my YouTube game, well, he's the person to learn from, right? I've actually been in the online education business for a decade now, and I sincerely think that Skillshare is a great product. For one, it's ad-free, so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. And there are new premium classes added every week, so there's always something new to discover. And the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. So if you want to check it out, the first 1,000 people to use this link right here will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare or hit the link in the description of this video. So check it out, and thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The reason I don't talk about death metal is because I'm scared of you guys showing up and being angry nerds in the comment and talking shit about anything that's not death metal. And so that makes me not want to talk about it. But that's unfortunate because I actually love death metal. It's one of my favorite genres of all time. I've been listening to death metal nonstop for 30 years. So please, any of you who are watching this, I ask you, I, I'm not asking, I'm begging you to prove me wrong. I'm begging you, please do not make me regret talking about death metal. So today, I am going to take you on a little tour of the genre if you'd like to get into it. So next time somebody stops you at the mall and they say, hey, you look like a school shooter. That means you probably know all about death metal. Where should I start? Next time that happens to you, you won't be caught unaware. You'll say, I've got just the video for you. Here, let me take out my Android phone that I bought at 7-Eleven and send you a link to this death metal starter kit by my boy Finn McKenty because it's got everything. So I will take you on a little journey through the genre in kind of sort of chronological order. Not exactly, but kind of sort of. Exactly. All you nerds out there right now about to type an angry comment. Rule number one, no getting angry about not mentioning the newest, most obscure bands with a thousand monthly listeners. That is rule number one. If you're about to comment, I can't believe there was no mention of blah, blah, blah. Close the video right now. You're banned, I'm sorry. So the very beginning of the genre, in my opinion, would be the band Possessed. This is from 1985. The song is called Death Metal, and I would say this is the beginning of the genre. A little bit, it's a little bit rough around the edges, but I love this. You know it's death metal because the song is called death metal. Do I love it objectively? Yes, I non-ironically objectively love this album and this band. I think this is fucking awesome. Also, what a fucking logo. How fucking cool is this logo? I don't know about the uh, like crappy Chinese restaurant menu font. That was a little bit of a strange choice, uh, but I think it's a great album. Obviously, this is very different from like any sort of modern death metal, but this is the beginning of the genre. That's right. It's got a little devil tail. Isn't that cute? Look at his little tail here. It just says, boink. Like someone said, hey, take the pee, but put a little tail on it. Put a little tail on him like hot stuff, the devil. Obviously, you know, pretty rough around the edges, but that's part of what I like about it. I'm not into this like slick, 
modern like overproduced death metal that's my biggest complaint with a lot of newer death metal is it's too slick um i much prefer the sort of like raw nasty old school kind of sound of course i understand most people are not going to be into it but it is the beginning of the genre so if you want to start from the beginning that's where i would start is the possessed album seven churches also fun fact larry lalonde from primus was in this band kind of random i found that out many years after i'd gotten into primus so that was surprising to me the next big album in the genre was death there are other people who say that death was the first death metal band i will let all you nerds with your boost mobile android phone in the comments want to get angry and debate this you can do that in the comments because i know you can't help yourselves i know you nerds can't help but debate petty pedantic shit that doesn't matter get angry in the youtube comments about who did it first I don't give a fuck who did it first. Either way, this is from 1987. This is the first death album, Scream Bloody Gore. This band is from Florida. I think they're from Tampa. 1987, they had a couple demos before this, but this is their first album. Pretty good shit. This didn't quite do it for me when I first heard Death, because um, I heard them after I had heard like Morbid Angel and some other kind of heavier bands. To me, this is more of like, I would almost call this like, you know, proto death metal. Either way, whatever. The the thing you'll notice is uh, number one, not a lot of blast beats. As far as I know, Death didn't really have any blast beats. And the vocals are more of like a sort of extreme version of like thrash, almost like kind of like hardcore kind of vocals um because there's none of the like death metal growls that you might have heard so that's like sort of the super old school death metal it just has kind of the slayer beat and none of the growls that would come a couple years later um i would say that probably the defining band of the next era of death metal that sounds like death metal as you know it um would be morbid angel this is the first morbid angel song i heard and uh in my opinion Still fucking holds up. This song is called Chapel of Ghouls off the first Morbid Angel album, Altars of Madness. This is from 1989, which I would say this is when death metal started to sound like death metal as you would know it. I have a tattoo of uh, the cover art for this album on my leg. Really cool solos too. Wild, like out of control warped kind of feel to the guitars there's also a great uh great breakdown here <laughs> satan and the bowels of hell awaits and this is when florida really became kind of the nexus of death metal so uh, Tampa, Florida, of all places. I'm not really sure why or how, but for whatever reason, Tampa, Florida became like the nexus of death metal. There were like, in the early 90s, just tons of bands from Florida. People were moving from all over the world to like, you know, make it big in death metal. We're moving to Tampa. We're going to make it big. <laughs> I don't think anybody is making it big in death metal even now. And certainly in the early 90s, uh, there was even less money in death metal. Uh, back then so i'm not sure that that was a good uh good move on that part but either way florida was the place to be back then the other big band of that time was deicide that's a band you don't really hear anything about these days but back then back in the early 90s deicide was like kind of the hottest band they had the most hype out of uh, out of any of those bands and they were pretty fucking good too you may have seen this kind of uh, hey, viral video of them playing on uh, public access tv from Gentlemen 1988 went and i saw these guys playing this poor guy introducing them rehearsal i wore my earplugs and i um when i left i still couldn't hear we have glenn standing here on bass and they're gonna do a couple original tunes and they're gonna uh, do a couple original tunes glenn Just sounds like fucking complete noise. Part of the reason why they had so much hype back then is because Glenn Benton was like a wild dude. I mean, he probably still is, but um, you can see he's had this upside down cross branded on his forehead. He got it like in the early 90s or whatever, late 80s. Um, the upside down cross burned on his forehead. That's pretty fucking extreme. And when they would play live back in the early days, he would wear this armor 
uh, which I remember back then thinking it looked so cool and uh, and edgy. Looking at it now, it just looks like someone took one of those BMX like chest protector things and glued a bunch of spikes to it and spray painted the whole thing silver, which is probably what it is. <laughs> you know, hey, look, it was 1988. We did the best we could with what we had. They also had a cool logo. I gotta say, everything they've put out for the past 20 years or so has been mid at best, but this album, Legion, was, I would say, like the hypest album of the early 90s death metal scene, and it's pretty fucking good. Very shrill guitar sound. Yes, Deicide sounded straight up evil, yes. Absolutely. They sounded super evil. I mean, this shit was so, like, what a cool album cover, too. Washing machine type beat. Yeah, he had those cool layered vocals of doing, like, the high and low vocals at the same time, which, of course, lots of people do now, but that was very uncommon back then. What's funny is that back then, this sounded, this was considered, like, overproduced. A lot of people thought that this was too slick sounding, which is funny because listening to it now, it sounds so, like, raw and shitty, right? In a good way. I think it sounds great. Uh, so Deicide, you don't hear too much about them these days, but the first two albums, in my opinion, uh, the self-titled and uh, Legion, and then there's also the Amen demo, which they like re-released. All three of those are fucking awesome. If you like old school death metal, and you should, then I would definitely go check that out. Another band that kind of, sort of, was from Florida. They were originally from Buffalo, New York, but moved to Florida. It's Cannibal Corpse. Of course, everyone knows about Cannibal Corpse, so I'm not going to say too much about them. Hammer Smashed Face, 10 out of 10. Absolutely incredible. Smash hit single. Do you see what I did there? Smash hit single. But The Bleeding was also a really good album. This was their last album with Chris Barnes from 95, I think. A little bit slower, but um, pretty good shit. If for some reason you'd never listened to Cannibal Corpse, I think the Chris Bourne stuff is pretty good, especially this album. Very catchy. The bleeding almost has a pop sensibility. I totally agree. And his vocals sounded so sick back then. Yeah, Cannibal has great songwriting. This is super catchy. The other big Florida band, which again, you don't hear about as much as you should these days is Obituary. One thing that's really interesting to me is back then you'll notice that these bands all sounded very different. I think these days is just, this is my boomer moment. Be like, back in my day, we had real death metal, God damn it. But it's kind of true. You'll notice that back then, these bands sounded different from each other, right? Like Deicide, Morbid Angel, and as we hear Obituary and Death, they sound very different from each other. These days, I feel like death metal sounds very, very, very samey. It's really lost a lot of the creativity that used to have back then. One example of that is Obituary. So all the other bands were playing fast and super technical, right? Well, Obituary said, what if we play like super slow, simple, like groovy shit? I think this is one of the best death metal songs ever. So catchy, so hooky. And a cool video too. This is the band all the hardcore kids love. Yeah, they got into obituary about 15 years late. They got into obituary like in the 2000s. But you know, that's how hardcore kids are. I'm gonna talk shit on hardcore kids for a minute. Here's the truth about hardcore. Hardcore is just a shitty version of what metal bands were doing 10 to 15 to 20 years earlier. It's the truth. If you listen to all the crossover bands of like the late 80s, they were just like kind of a shitty version of thrash. And then the hardcore bands of the 2000s got kind of heavier because they discovered bands like Obituary and Suffocation, but did it much shittier. All the hardcore bands of the late 90s were a shitty version of Slayer or Pantera or Prong. It's just the truth. So it does not surprise surprise me the hardcore kids discovered obituary in 2004 <laughs> like imagine discovering obituary in 2004 almost 20 years late the band started in like 1985 you're 20 years late to the program hardcore kids love this drumming some of you may know this drummer played with andrew wk as well it's so groovy All the hipsters are discovering death metal now. Tomb Mold and Blood Incantation getting the Pitchfork readers on board. I know. This is what makes me sympathize 
with the second wave Norwegian black metal bands, when the hipsters come in and start discovering death metal, it's time to get them the fuck out. I'm being serious. I don't want these fucking Brooklyn vegan pitchfork fucking hipsters listening to death metal. I don't want it. That's why I support what the black metal bands did of playing deliberately off-putting shitty like raw music that they knew those people would hate. I support it. I really like sincerely do. It's true. Gatekeeping is sometimes necessary. It's true. We must protect death metal at all costs. Make death metal Florida white trash again. Exactly. Love obituary. You don't hear that much about this band these days. I think it's a shame because they're great. One of the other big uh, Florida death metal bands. The other scene at that time, which uh, I liked a lot and still like a lot, is the New York death metal scene. Now, the New York stuff... It was not from New York City. It was mostly from Long Island. And this stuff was way more brutal. If you're unfamiliar with death metal, this is probably what you think death metal sounds like. This is like when this shit got super fucking heavy. Suffocation started in 89, I believe. And this album is from 91. This is their first full-length album, which I would consider like sort of the definitive New York death metal album called Effigy of the Forgotten. This is when the shit got really, really, really heavy and really slammy. Love that guitar tone. I love the production on this. And they were like 20 when they did this. 21, maybe? Super young. And of course, as you guys all know, the iconic Liege of Inveracity slam part. This is the riff that really started slam. You can hear like every beat down band and shit like that. All these like fucking New Jack hardcore bands that discovered suffocation five years ago. You will recognize this riff. This like chunky chromatic kind of riff has been ripped off millions and millions of times. Right here, here it is. Here comes the riff. That's beautiful, solid state guitar tone. Anyway, if you're into that kind of stuff, Effigy of the Forgotten, in my opinion, 10 out of 10 album. Cannot miss with this one. Definitely check it out. The other big band that you don't hear anything about these days is uh, Internal Bleeding. Uh, they started around the same time as Suffocation, maybe a year or two later, but right around the same time. They shared some of the same members, uh, also from Long Island. These are the guys that actually invented the term slam. They have ads from like 1991 or whatever, where they called their music like pure fucking slam. This is the band that invented slam, period. This is just a fact. It's the drummer who died. R.I.P. Bill from uh, Internal Bleeding. He was a New York firefighter who died in a fire a couple years ago. Very sad. Awesome drummer. Uh, seemed like a great guy. This is their first album, Voracious Contempt, which is a masterpiece of slam. It sounds just fucking disgusting. I love the production on this. The vocals are so filthy and such cool drumming. It sounds like shit in the best way. I'm a huge fan of this whole Internal Bleeding album. I mean, listen to this part. Love Pyrexia. Just really quickly, I could list all these fucking obscure Long Island death metal bands. Um, I'll just really quickly give a shout out to Pyrexia, another band from Long Island that shared some members with Internal Bleeding and Suffocation. This album has some of the fucking weirdest, most disturbing artwork of all time. Absolute fucking gem. If you're into like Long Island, like slam type stuff, this is from 1993, Sermon and Mockery, absolute fucking gem. I worship this album. So groovy and slammy. Just love those like chromatic slam riffs. Good question here. What was going on on Long Island that there were all these bands from Long Island? Well, have you ever been to Long Island? You know how there's all those like meathead, like idiot guidos, you know, like the guys on Jersey Shore and stuff. Imagine those guys playing death metal and that's what was going on. Like, hey, what's going on? We're internal bleeding from Long Island, New York. Hope you guys keep it fucking brutal out there. Got some good slams coming up for you. This is our first song. It's called uh, Epoch of Brutality. That's, uh, that's what was going on on Long Island. Just the meathead slam riffs. The last New York death metal band 
um, to note is incantation. Uh, I don't actually think I know exactly where they're from. Well, they're from, yeah, they're from New Jersey. Maybe, I don't know. Somewhere in the New York kind of area. This is the template for all the new school type shit. All the new school, old school death metal bands that you hear. Like all these labels like Maggot Stomp and whatnot. Incantation is the template for them. Which I find kind of surprising. Because Incantation were not popular in the 90s. I saw them in maybe 96 or something like that. And there was maybe 30 people there. Maybe. Nobody really gave a shit about Incantation at all back then. So it's kind of interesting to me that they are such an influential band now. This is their uh, seven inch from 91, which is my favorite thing that they've done. Like, listen to how many modern bands sound like this. All that tomb mold, blood incantation shit. It's just straight up copying early incantation. This could be any number of fucking hipster death metal bands in the current year, right? Every fucking band sounds like this now. I don't really like Incantation that much, but got to give them a shout out for being so influential. And if you like it, early Incantation is the stuff to check out, in my opinion. By the way, I, I should give a shout out to there's a very, 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 very good channel called Ken's Death Metal Crypt, which is just full of this shit. You can see I'm subscribed to it. If you want to check out like old school death metal, um, check out his popular uploads. So much good, just random shit from all over the world. Very obscure shit. A lot of good shit that I've never even heard of. And I know a lot about old death metal. Um, but he's got a lot of obscure shit. Like, I mean, just random old demos like this. It sounds great. I love this type of shit. This is from 92. Again, how many bands now are doing this sound, you know? This is like every new death metal band sounds like this. All the hipster death metal. Next big scene, which I'm not going to spend much time on because I don't like it and I'm not really an authority on it, but be melodic death metal. Of course, at the gates, the definitive, like there is no question about it. At the gates is the definitive melodic death metal band. I know that there are bands like uh, In Flames and Soil Work and stuff that ended up being more popular. I think it's wild that like In Flames is considered kind of the definitive melodic death metal band, not at the gates because 100% this is the album that changed everything because it was all like the uh, Morbid Angel, Deicide, like Florida death metal type stuff. This album came out and then instantly everyone started copying At The Gates. No question. Now, you might think In Flames is better, but it's wild to me how many people now basically don't care about At The Gates is insane to me. This band should be the biggest melodic death metal band, period. Like they are the OGs. Uh, and I think this is the best song, Slaughter of the Soul. Go! Great guitar tone. Yeah, this sounds great to me. Like, I don't like this band, but you got to give them respect. One of the most important death metal albums of all time, for sure. One very underrated, I would call them melodic death metal, although they were kind of on the heavier side of things, a random underrated melodic death metal band from Denmark. Um, I'm just going to list a few obscure bands here just so you guys can check them out if you want. This band called Ill Disposed. They have a few albums, but this album, Four Depressive Seasons, if you're into kind of like a heavier take on Melodeath, this band fucking is so good. Like a heavier take on that sound. So good. I love the production on this. Like, this shit is so heavy. But still melodic. It's tuned really low for this era, too. This is from 93, I think. 93 or 94. It is brutal. And speaking of brutal, brutal death metal, I could literally list like a hundred brutal death metal bands. That's not what we're here to do. We've got brutal death metal. We've got brutal technical death metal. We've got technical brutal death metal. The nuances, I mean, we could just go down that rabbit hole all night long, but we're not going to do that. I'll just play two brutal death metal bands that you might want to check out. One you may be familiar with is Dying Fetus. Um, this is my favorite Dying Fetus album, Killing on Adrenaline from 1998. Very good shit. Very groovy. Dying Fetus is mostly horrible, uh, but this song is pretty good. Yeah, they never topped this song. You're right. This is the best one. Just like a bitch, you had to run away. 
the tough guy lyrics. I think Dying Fetus is kind of crappy for the most part, but that album was good. Uh, my favorite band of this era is Deeds of Flesh, especially their first album. By the way, R.I.P. Eric from Deeds of Flesh. He died a couple years ago. Very sad. They put out quite a few other albums, which I think are okay. But this first album is their best one, in my opinion. This came out in 95 or 96, I think, called Trading Pieces. This is my favorite. Uh, I love the production on this. What a fucking great drum sound. This is like perfect death metal production to me. You can hear everything, but it's really filthy and raw. Love that guitar tone too. Just absolutely zero mids, zero presence. This whole album is just complete riff salad and I fucking love it. I've been listening to this album nonstop since I first got it in 96. I think this band's from Santa Barbara, as I recall. So if you're into brutal death metal, if you like the sound of that, this is the album to check out, in my opinion. Now, it gets into what, in my opinion, is the most interesting territory. You guys, all you fucking new jacks out there, you think I don't know anything about progressive music. Let me tell you, motherfuckers, I've been listening to progressive death metal since, like, 1992. 30 fucking years I've been listening to this shit. So, let's talk about some progressive and technical death metal. Uh, starting with, in my opinion the most interesting band of the genre, Cynic. This album is from 92, I think, right? Uh, 93. They were like 19 or 20 when they played on this. No click track, one take. I asked the drummer about this. They played it live to tape in the studio with no fucking click track. Can you imagine playing this shit with no click track live to tape? R.I.P. Sean, Sean Reiner, R.I.P. Very interesting album. The first band to kind of do like jazz fusion death metal. Sean Malone, the bassist, I believe he died too, didn't he? Everyone in this band is just such a fucking good musician. I mean, listen to this. This is this still sounds so cool and fresh to me. These like kind of Alan Holdsworth, like fusion kind of parts, really cool. A couple things to note here. One, somebody said, weren't they the first openly gay metal band? I don't know if they were the very first, but yes, at least Paul and Sean, um, who ended up being in death, were gay and they were out, at least kind of out at the time. And uh, I remember they toured with Cannibal Corpse and people were throwing bottles at them, calling them F words and stuff. You know, they were really out there on the front lines of this shit back when being you know, an openly gay person in the metal scene was like, you know, you actually had to fear for your safety. I mean, metal people are still kind of homophobic, but back then, and like, I mean, imagine going on tour with Cannibal Corpse in 94, playing music that sounds like this being, you know, some little gay kid from South Florida, right? Very, um, you know, I think that like actually took balls to do that. And also you'll notice this song is called Veil of Maya. I would assume that that is where the band Veil of Maya got their name from. And this is taken from a concept in like Hindu Krishna conscious philosophy called Veil of Maya, which I won't talk about, but something that I care about very deeply on a philosophical level as well. So I would highly suggest checking out this album. Their demos are cool too. The demos are more straightforward death metal. Um, but I think this is their best album, in my opinion, called Focus. Another band, of course, we've already talked about Death, but Death, uh, after kind of pioneering regular death metal, uh, went on to pioneer uh, progressive death metal, specifically on the album Human in 1991, where he got two of the guys from Cynic, who were like 19 at the time, to play in the band. And uh, sounds kind of similar. I think Cynic, uh, along with Steve DiGiorgio, from Sadus, who is an incredible bassist. You can kind of hear the sort of cynic-like elements in this. I think this is very similar to Cynic, but in my opinion, Cynic did this better. I do like Death. I think they're cool, um, but... I heard uh, Cynic before I heard this album. So to me, I never really got into this because I was already listening to Cynic and Atheist and Pestilence. So this kind of wasn't as interesting to me, but I do think it's very well done. So if you're into this stuff, check it out. Now, here's where it gets interesting. 
Another random band that uh, didn't get their recognition until many years later is a band called Demolich from Finland that only did this one album, as far as I'm aware. Very weird shit. If you like the, look at the cover art too. Just very unsettling. This is one of the strangest albums. Really, really weird shit, but still sounds great to me. I love the artwork, love the production. Everything about this is just so bizarre. Jazzy death metal with a frog on vocals, exactly. A lot of bands these days are doing a similar kind of sound. This is from 93, came out of nowhere. Nobody gave a fuck about this band back in the day. Nobody. I didn't hear them until 98. Still, it's like such a strange sound, right? Big fan. Another progressive band that if for some reason you guys haven't listened to Opeth, you definitely should. Great band, you know, they started out as relatively straightforward death metal, but then I I think this is their best album. When they started to sound more like Steely Dan. <laughs> this album's a masterpiece. Just flawless album, in my opinion. Opeth's death metal stuff is cool, but I think this is way better. I mean, this song is 10 minutes long and there's just like multiple movements in it. Great album. Does kind of sound like Ghost, doesn't it? If for some reason you haven't listened to Opeth, you should. They're great. Another band that, of course, you got to listen to if you're into, you know, technical death metal. I would say still, this this is from, what, 99 or so? And I would say this still holds up. Necrophagist. This song is Stab Wound. I'm sure you guys know this stuff. Two, oh, 2004. Okay, whatever. Old as hell, but it still holds up. I wouldn't choose to listen to this, but it does sound great. I figure everyone knows this band, but just in case you don't, for some reason, a lot of scene kids discovered this band. And I'm not sure how, but I'm assuming everyone knows them. But just in case you don't, check out Necrophagist. Another band that I would highly recommend that you check out. Origin has several other albums, which I think are kind of um, boring, to be honest. They're kind of like riff salad -y that just sort of go nowhere. But this first album is super, super interesting, especially the drumming. I've never heard drumming like this before or since. It's just like... Some of the most creative, unique, just sounds like somebody throwing a set of drums down the stairs, but in a cool way. Exactly. The drums are almost suffocating. So erratic and punishing. Yes. This is the first album I heard Gravity Blasts on. It's the strangest drumming. Like he's not even playing beats. They're just like random single stroke rolls and stuff, right? Like it's it's just single stroke rolls around the kit. It's really strange. Now check this motherfucker out. He has such a strange style. Um, and notice the economy of motion. The guy barely moves. He's playing the wildest shit and he's just moving like this much. It doesn't look that cool, but this is why he's able to play all this crazy shit moving his hands like this much. It's such an interesting style. Like he actually uses his hi-hat. Like playing a closed hi-hat in a blast beat is such a cool sound. Barely moving. Cause it's all fingers. Not like this caveman hardcore shit. It's all fingers. Yeah, he doesn't throw his body around. That's how come he can play this fucking fast. Cause there'd be no way to play this using your arms. It's like such a cool style. You know, not just like all these like boring blasters. He actually plays like, he has dynamics when he's blasting. Nobody else does that, you know? To have dynamics in a blast, I love that. Big fan. So the first Origin album, self-titled, it's on Relapse. I think it came out in 99 or 2000. That is the album I like best. Moving on. Uh, let's talk about slam. I'm sure most of you guys watching this uh, are aware of slam as a genre, but in case you're not, Devourment is the seminal band in the genre. Internal Bleeding invented the term. Suffocation sort of pioneered the sound, but Devourment is the band that really kind of 
captured what we think of as slam now in particular this song baby killer is their their big hit song the most catchy one i would say the big hit single i love this song so groovy so catchy you can actually sing along with it a little bit Devourment is still around. I do not like their newer stuff as much, but they are still around. Cool guys. Love that snare too. So if you're into this style, Devourment is definitely a band to check out. My personal favorite slam band, however, is Cerebral Incubation, especially this album, Gonorrhea Nodule Mastication from 2012, I believe. This is my all-time favorite slam album. I don't think anybody will ever top this. This is the perfection of the genre, in my opinion. Just everything about this is perfect. The songwriting, the production, just everything is perfect. Absolutely love everything about this. Love the drumming, too. Perfect. Love this guitar tone too. I believe it's a metal zone. Perfection in my opinion. Here comes the slam part. Love the drumming in this album too. Shout out to Ricky. Obviously not the most listener friendly shit. That was pretty brutal, even by my standards. Now, that brings us to the present day, which is all the new school, old school death metal bands. For example, this band Sanguasugabog, who I think are awesome. What's interesting about this is that uh, the new wave of death metal bands, which I call new school, old school death metal bands, is essentially hardcore guys in their 30s emulating the early incantation shit. I would say Sanguasugabog, one of the very best. There's tons and tons of this shit. Frozen Soul is very good. Yes. I think most of it is bad, but this band is great. Very catchy. Love the snare too. Sometimes I'll just listen to this band for like an hour straight. If I'm like writing or something, I'll just put this album on repeat and listen to it over and over and over. The old death metal bands seem to hate this band with a passion. It's because Sanguasugabog are hardcore guys. So they're not a bunch of fucking uptight racist death metal guys. <laughs> That's why the old school fans don't like them. They're not racist dirtbags. Love that snare. Listen to that. Mm. You guys know I love those pingy snares. So groovy. That snare. Oh, love that snare. Love the polka beat. You can see how obscure this is. 14 views. This is a band called Damnation's Domain, which is uh, some, I think it's like all the members, or at least some of the members from the hardcore band Year of the Knife playing death metal. This is some pretty weird shit. It's all the members moved around. Okay. This is like very, very aggressive, weird, um, nasty shit. And I love it. This is like genuinely unsettling, filthy shit in the way that death metal should be. It just sounds fucking putrid, right? It does whip. I agree. This is what death metal is supposed to be. Not this like overly polished fucking pristine technical shit. It should be filthy and nasty and disgusting like this. It sounds wrong, exactly. Straight out of the sewer. It sounds like some shit tier demo from 1990 in a great way. The last band I will leave you with, as far as new school, old school death metal goes, is my friends in Gate Creeper. This shit fucks. No two ways around it. This is like one of the best songs in the genre ever. When it comes to new school, old school death metal, this might be my favorite song in the entire genre. This is Rusted Gold by Gate Creeper. Another racist death metal fan repellent band, yeah. The racist death metal boomers don't like Gate Creeper, probably because they're also hardcore dudes. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure, but this shit fucks. God, so good. 
So fucking nasty. There it is, my friends. And there you have it. The starter kit to death metal. I took you through, I don't know, not every single corner of the genre, but I think that I showed you kind of the most important parts of it. You can dig deeper from there. Obviously, I can't mention every possible band, but hopefully those of you who made it this far got something out of it. And uh, maybe someday, if you guys don't prove me right, Hopefully the comments on this video on YouTube, hopefully the comments are not full of pedantic nerds telling me I'm wrong about everything and uh, being angry that I didn't mention this band or that band because guess what, motherfuckers? I've been listening to death metal longer than most of you fucking posers have been alive. So you can fucking jam it. There you have it. There is your death metal starter kit.